Okay, bro. Chicago is the realest place on earth, no doubt. It literally has the highest death rate in the United States. 542 murders in 2018 and 3,500 people shot in 2017. Numbers like this have been going on for years. The gang culture alone is huge, and a few years ago, the internet couldn't get enough of it. Back in 2012, Chicago exploded on the internet with GDK vs BDK, the little JoJo Chief Keef conspiracy, and much more. Chicago artists were blowing up on Worldstar. Out of this time period in Chicago, we got some real ass rappers, man. People like Lil Durk, Ronald Number 9, LA Capone, and Chief Keef. But today we're focusing on one individual, the Chirac Wolverine, Lil J, Double O, the Clout Lord. Today on Chirac Saga, man. Fuck a discussion, adrenaline rush, and I see a op, I get the bus. Get hot, you know that it's not. I move out of state with my cut. You say it for two, can let you better rule. Man, that's the repercussion. Okay, let's get into the basics. Lil J, birth name Jeff McGraw, was a popular Chicago rapper during the 2012 through 2015 era of Chicago rap. Lil J first gained attention with his music videos for Every Day I Hustle and Let It Blow in 2012. But it wasn't until 2013 that he dropped his two biggest songs, a remix to Pete Rico's Hang With Me and Bars of Clout 1. Later on in his career, towards 2014 and early 2015, he dropped hits like Fantano Remix and Why So Arrogant. These songs and many more have millions of views and no doubt boosted his success. But there's also the fact that its influence in the gang culture and wounds in the battlefield have boosted his career even more. To start off, Lil J was originally an FYB, but later on in high school, he linked up with FPG Duck and joined FPG. FPG, which stands for Flyboy Gang, is heavily connected to the gang Gangster Disciples GDK, and because of that makes BDK, Black Disciples, a known enemy of GDK. And because of that, there were feuds against rappers in BDK like Chief Key, Fredo Santana, Team 600, against members of FPG, which consisted of, of rappers like Pete Rico, Billionaire Black, FPG Duck, FBG Brick, FBG Butter, and of course Lil J, and many more. There has been ongoing feuds between the two groups of rap. Lil J has been known to send threats to BDK on a lot of occasions. There was even one time when he challenged Chief Keef and Lil Durk to a $150,000 fist fight, but it never really happened. Lil J also claims that he ran up on LA Capone and scared the hell out of him. And then he also claims that he made Chief Keef leave a store and fucking just go. There's also been a number, and I'm talking a lot of diss songs coming from the two different groups. One example is when the BDK Team 600 rapper Rondo Number 9 said I'm smoking Tuca Pack, which was a reference to Tuca, who was an FPG affiliate who died at the age of 15. A smoke, yeah, no, the Tuca Pack, yeah, I'm happy. Got the fucking 50 in the Mac, I will wet you quick. This beef is circled around a number of things, but one of the biggest things is the fact that Chief Keef is rumored, heavily rumored, to be involved in the shooting of FPG rapper Lil Jojo in 2012. Now back to Lil J. If you're a fan, you might notice that sometimes he likes to go by the Chirac Wolverine. This is a nickname made popular by DJ Academics in the War of Chirac series. This nickname comes from the fact that he's been shot a fuck ton and always ends up okay. According to lots of sources, he's been shot 21, 22 times, and he even mentions this in some of his songs. But in a 2017 through the phone interview with DJ Vlad, he says he was shot 15 times. According to him, he was shot six times early on in his career, and in 2013, he was shot nine times at a McDonald's in Chicago. He did go into coma after getting the bullets removed, but it was only for 24 hours, and he was fine. All in all, the guy's a fucking beast. He's hard to take down. For the next two years following 2013, shit was moving pretty good for Lil J. He dropped bangers like the Fantano remix and great mixtapes like Unexpected Fame 2. And man, you already know I can't make a Lil J video without talking about his dance, The Diddy Bop, which Drake did his own version in the video for his song, Hotline Bling. And also can't make this video without mentioning his catchphrase, It's GET IT! Which was later used as a catchphrase of rapper Lil Pump years later. So, Lil J was on a pretty big wave. But, 
Why aren't we seeing him now? Why do we not see his videos on World Star today? Well, he's bulletproof, so he's not dead. Don't worry. But the reason why we don't see him is quite sad. It all goes back to May 4th, 2015. From police reports and news articles, here's what I was able to put together. No, the only person that really knows what really happened are people involved. Well, according to reports, Lil J and some boys wanted to get fucking lit and smoke some weed. One of them boys being FBG. But, but when they were on their way to get some of that sweet, sticky, icky, icky, they ran into a man disrespecting the clout lord. And with Lil J having the status of a real G hitter, he couldn't take that shit. So he went to one of his girls' cribs to grab a gun. Well, then Lil J and his squad came back and started laying down shots. But the 22 year old had guns of his own and laid back shots back. So let me give you a quick rundown for any facts I forgot. So Lil J and the squad wanted some weed. They went to this dude to buy some weed, this 22 year old, and the dude started disrespecting. Lil J got a gun, started shooting back, but the dude had guns of his own. So they're in this big shootout, right? And shit's getting pretty real. But then one of Lil J's associates was shot badly. That associate being a 25 year old named Filmon in Razine. No, by this point the 22 year old was injured, but everybody dipped and was later arrested by the fed. Six people were arrested for the shootout, one of them even being the girl, Brittany Dupree, who Lil J got the gun from. She was arrested a little later after the fact after fed saw her with a bag full of guns. Filmon on the other hand, the guy who got shot pretty badly, he was taken to a hospital where he died on May 15th. So then Lil J and the rest of the gang were all brought to fucking jail, right? Lil J was put on a $750,000 bail, but due to a probation violation, he couldn't get out right then. These days he could get out for a percentage of the bond if you know how the legal system works. So he could get out for around $75,000, $80,000. So, if you're wondering why Lil J got slammed so hard in the case, not counting the fact that he did start a shootout and somebody did die and that did put a murder charge on Lil J's head, but one big factor in all of it was the fact his best friend, FBG Butter, snitched on him. There were literally videos of FBG Butter in like the little room with the cops snitching. Videos of him snitching. Today, FBG Butter is known as one of the biggest snitches in the Chicago rap game, even though he's not even a rapper. Lil J's mom even ran up on him and threatened him, which put her in jail for a short while. But even so, FBG Butter is a fucking snitch. I can't stress this enough. But what about Lil J? What about him? Well, today he's still fighting the case. He did turn down an eight year plea deal because he knows he can beat this. If you keep up with his Instagram ran by his mom, you'll know that he goes to court around every month. And if he loses his case, he could face like 15 years or more in prison. He's no longer facing murder, which is good, but he is facing some pretty big gun charges. So what is Lil J up to now? He's still in jail, right? But he's kept his image pretty known from jail. He's had phone interviews from a lot of YouTubers, and he's had Instagram live streams where he talks over the phone from jail. On November 12th of this year, 2019, Lil J will celebrate his 26th birthday. And may or may not still be in jail. Alright, so he's kept in a Cook County jail, right? And there's been a lot of BVK rappers that's been there and some of them still there. I'm talking like Tay 600, C Day, Rondo, and even fucking D Rowe. Reportedly, Lil J did have a conversation with Rondo within jail and they squashed their beef. While in jail, he's announced that he's left FEG due to not getting a lot of calls from FEG affiliate. While in jail, he's also been able to keep up with his music. Lil J has said that he has around 150, 200 songs in the vault that were recorded before he was incarcerated. Lil J says when he gets out, he's releasing a song with Young Pappy, the FEG, aka Brick Squad rap rapper who died in 2015. In a 2017 interview, former FEG member Famous Dex revealed he even has a song with the Cloud Lord, which is unreleased. While being in jail, Lil J has actually been able to release a mixtape, Return of Carlito in 2017, which was a lot of unreleased music. All in all, it had good reviews. And he's even announced his highly anticipated album Sub-Zero will come in the future with more unreleased music. So, to wrap it up, Lil J gonna stay in Cook County until he beats that case and races out of that beat. One thing to remember about Lil J is he never got that chart topping single. I'm sure if he had more time in the game, he would've got it. But till the day he's out, we're waiting. Alright man, that's it for today. Free Lil J and all that shit. Tune in next week on Rap by Rack for more Chirac Saga. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace!
still, bitch, I'm never slipping. Mr. Take you out your glory, shoot like Scotty Pippen. I never shoot from distance, I got good precision. And I'm all about my dough, just like Homer Simpson. Tell me some, you a fucking bum. Have you ever shot a gun? It will block you from. Show me some, nigga, show me some.